Today, I'm going to compare a budget gaming laptop to something a little bit more I'd aristocratic. Say. To try and answer the question, are expensive gaming laptops actually worth it? The budget gaming laptop for today's comparison is the cheapest gaming laptop that was available at my local Best Buy, and I paid about 800 Canadian dollars for it. It is this HP Victus thing. Laptop names are weird, Victus could mean many things, but this is one of them, I guess. But its cheapness isn't the only reason I found it interesting. It's got like the loser version of the oligarch laptop's hardware configuration in it, which I think makes for an even more interesting comparison. CPU-wise, we've got a Ryzen 5 7535HS in there, and then the GPU is an RTX 2050. A budget gaming laptop GPU I haven't really seen around much, but I'm pretty interested to check out. It may be interesting enough to warrant its own dedicated video, but we'll see how it goes later in the video performance-wise. The rest of the specs aren't great. We've just got 8 gigs of RAM, which really isn't a lot for gaming these days. And they don't mention the refresh rate of the display, which that's a little bit concerning. Now, when it comes to the big boy gaming laptop, Asus Canada very kindly sent over one of their new Zephyrus G14 gaming laptops, which according to the Asus eStore costs 2,200 US dollars, which is quite a lot more than 600 US dollars for a gaming laptop. And for our significant additional investment, CPU-wise, it comes with a Ryzen 9 8945HS, an 8-core, 16-thread monster of a CPU. I recently had a look at the previous generation version of it, which is basically the same CPU, in a mini PC, and it destroyed benchmarks. Real powerful chip which is paired with an RTX 4070. So just there, we've already got way more power than the little HP laptop. We also get more RAM and storage, but one of the real interesting things is the display in the G14. Ooh, the display in the G14, which we'll get to a little bit later. So with that, let's get to what I guess is the second category of comparison. How much better build quality are you getting from a $2,200 laptop compared to a $600 one? Now, it's pretty easy to summarize the build quality difference between these two laptops. When you open up the HP for the first time, you go kind of like, ooh. Whereas with the Asus, it's like, ooh. Oh. There's something about the combination of metal in the build, the glass in the display, and the weight of the hinge that when you open this little Zephyrus with one hand, it is a borderline erotic experience. It doesn't have quite the same hewn in a volcano by Tahitian virgins for the gods vibe of a MacBook, but it's not super far off. Now don't get me wrong, the build quality on the little HP is fine for a budget gaming laptop. It's all plastic, as is expected for this price point, but it's the kind of plastics that make you question whether or not plastic actually isn't biodegradable very scratchy materials that feel like they're not going to last a super long time, but it passes the one hand open test. Yeah, like I said, for its price point, the build quality is completely acceptable. It's just that metal and glass are always going to win out over plastic, and every time you interact with the little Zephyrus, it's just, it's just so nice. If quite difficult to keep clean, it's quite fingerprinty. Now the keen-eyed of you probably would have noticed that there's a size difference between the two. The little Asus laptop is 14 inch, whereas the HP is 15.6. And for that extra size, you're getting a dedicated numpad on the keyboard of the HP. And the keyboard on the HP laptop's fine. It, it is a serviceable laptop keyboard. The same goes for the trackpad, it's fine. In fact, the trackpad is the same size as the one on the Zephyrus, although the Zephyrus one it's just got more satisfying clicks. It's a nice trackpad. I like it. Uh, the keyboard is also just a solid laptop keyboard. It's nothing particularly special. But the most important thing we get for our additional $1,600 is a dedicated power button that's like 
in a funky triangle shape, as opposed to a power button that's just hidden among the F keys. Another important point of comparison is I.O., where for all of your extra money, you're getting an additional Type-C port, and for some reason, losing a full-sized SD card slot. I don't know why, but this just has a micro SD card slot on it, which is something that annoys me for some reason. However, the Asus does have a huge advantage. Most of its important I.O. is on the left-hand side of the device, which means you can plug a whole bunch of stuff into it without cables getting in the way of your mouse hand. Whereas with the HP laptop, the HDMI port and the Ethernet is on the right-hand side of the device, which is a real pet peeve of mine with laptops because it, it just gets all cluttered on the side your mouse needs to be. Very annoying. Webcam wise, there's a very big difference between these two laptops. We'll also hear what the microphone sounds like on them for like web calls and stuff. But in this quite difficult lighting situation, I look all bright and stuff on the Zephyrus, whereas I look very, it's just so flat. Surprise, surprise, a lot more money gets you way better laptop speakers. On the HP laptop, the speakers sound like they're trying to attack you with a tin bath whereas they are very usable on the Asus laptop. It's almost as though having front firing speakers is a much better design decision than firing them straight down into the desk. Who would have seen that coming? On that song that I use, there's like a bass guitar riff, which the HP laptop can't even reproduce. It's too low a frequency for it to make. Whereas the Asus laptop, it just does it confidently. No problem. Very good speakers on this laptop. Next, we need to diagnose what strains of herpes these laptops come pre-infected with. And I don't think any of you would be surprised that both these systems are as diseased as the communal PC at the local nursing home. The most common strain McAfee is ever present, but both these laptops have a whole suite of software that launches every time you boot it, slowing down that process quite a lot, and yeah, they barely have enough RAM just to load all the bloatware on them. You really have to do a fresh Windows install on pretty much any gaming laptop, because the manufacturers really load them down with crap. But with that, before we get to the gaming performance, I do want to talk about the displays on these laptops. Because the 14 inch high resolution OLED in the Zephyrus does things to my undercarriage. The combination of the absurd measurements with the inky black levels of OLED and the glass front, which isn't prohibitively reflective on this display, it is just beautiful but you also get 120 hertz and some of the best motion rendering. Now, in terms of shortcomings, it's not quite bright enough to blind you, which I personally think is kind of overrated. And OLED does also have burn-in concerns, but those are minor quibbles for a magnificent display. Whereas in comparison, the HP display just spits straight in your retina. Now it may be 1080p, so it's reasonably sharp, but it looks and measures like butt cheeks and it's only 60 Hertz. Although, um, you'll see that hardware wise, maybe the 60 Hertz display kind of makes sense. Performance wise, both these laptops have their issues. I'd say the HP's is maybe a bit bigger considering that it runs games a little bit like it's got asthma during hay fever season. But again, it's a lot cheaper, so maybe it's more excusable? I don't know, let's see. Starting with Battlefield 5 at 1080p high settings, obviously the HP gets dumpstered by the Asus. The Asus costs almost four times as much. But considering the 4070 in the Asus, this is not running great. And I think the culprit is the power limit. It's just drawing 50 watts, which is less than half I've seen it draw in other gaming laptops. Now you can go into Armory Crate and crank everything to Ultimate, which doesn't do much aside from improve the 1% lows, which is welcome considering how stuttery the gaming experience was. And remember, this laptop doesn't have a 1080p display in it, and when you crank the resolution to native, you lose way more performance. And it's not like in exchange you get a quiet gaming experience, the laptop's still howling like a bonobo on heat.
Interestingly, the HP was running a decent bit quieter, but it was much closer to spontaneous combustion. Moving over to CS2, we've got a similar performance gap between the two, but because of the much higher frame rate, things are looking better, I guess, for the HP. But it still has a 60Hz panel, so esports titles don't feel great on it. With a more demanding game like Cyberpunk at 1080p high settings, the Asus laptop starts to extend its lead quite a bit. Granted, these are quite aggressive graphics settings for a budget laptop, but it helps illustrate the performance difference between the two. Interestingly, on the Fancy Boy, going from 1080p to its native resolution costs you about half your frame rate. And when it comes to the temperatures and noise, you can really see why they had to shackle that 4070. And finally, The Last of Us straight up refuses to associate with the budget laptop because of the whole RAM situation. When it comes to CPU performance, you're gaining over 3000 Cinebench multi-core points for your extra money. And a decent step up in single core performance, which I wasn't really expecting to this extent. But with that, let's get to one of the final points of comparison, upgradability. Both laptops are relatively straightforward to get into, and conveniently, both of them also have their own quirk. The final tug on the HP feels like you're shattering some of its vertebra. Oh and the Asus has its final two screws hidden under some little rubber grommety things. Yeah, they do that very fun thing where they hide screws under little rubber grommets. Oh, oh no. So the only things that are upgradable in here is the storage, but there's just a single M.2 slot, which I guess is forgivable for the form factor. Uh, then we can also replace the Wi-Fi card and the battery looks pretty easy to deal with. But the RAM is soldered down. Asus, come on. I get it. It's a thin laptop, but I'd take a couple of millimeters for RAM upgradability any day of the week. 16 gigs isn't enough for a device like this. So if you are going to buy one, I would definitely go for the 32 gig one, but then you're stuck with 32 gigs. Now moving over to the HP, first thing, wow, that is a tiny battery. And look at that, we've got socketed RAM. Although, having said that, it would have been a much bigger problem if they just soldered 8 gigs of RAM to it, as opposed to the 16 gigs of RAM on the Asus laptop. At least 16 is usable for gaming. So after that comparison, do I think that expensive gaming laptops are actually worth it? Now, I'm going to start off with a little bit of a non-answer. Value is very subjective. What's worth it to somebody may not be worth it to somebody else. And if you can afford the thing, obviously plays a huge role. Budget laptops exist for a reason. And there are a lot of very good ones out there. Having said that, if you can comfortably afford a high-end gaming laptop, there is a lot of nice things about them. This Asus Zephyrus is a beautiful device although I have not forgiven Asus for soldering RAM down onto it. Again, I understand the form factor, but why do you have to do stuff like that? Naughty Asus. Anyway, moving on. A nice gaming laptop is just so nice to interact with. And I feel like within reason, high-end gaming laptops are some of the tech things that do more to justify their price premium, even if they do still howl like a jet engine under load. I don't know. Let me know what you think about that in the comment section down below from your personal experience. And let me know if you want to see more is expensive thing really worth it videos. I really enjoyed making this comparison. So subscribe to the channel if you want to see that. Oh, and also for the next video, I'm going to have a closer look at the ray tracing performance of the RTX 2050 in this budget laptop. And with that, I think we're done. Thank you again, Asus Canada for sending over the Zephyrus. And until the next video, bye-bye.